Hi, this is Jeff West, and I'd like to give you an overview of WebLogic Server's distributed JMS. Let's get started by taking a look at the basic JMS use cases. There are two logical use cases for messaging with JMS. The first is an asynchronous point-to-point -point model, where each message that is placed on the destination is received by only one consumer. For this model, JMS queues are used. The second JMS messaging use case is a publish and subscribe model. In this model, each message placed on the destination is received by each consumer. For the pub sub model, JMS topics are used. In this model, it is also common for consumers to have a message selector that is used to filter specific messages that are interesting for that consumer. For example, you could have several subscribers listening for status updates on a topic, some receiving all updates, and others only receiving updates for a specific status. Next, let's take a look at distributed JMS use cases. For distributed JMS, you have multiple JMS containers that can receive messages. When you use distributed queues, each message is delivered to only one consumer in a single MDB container, maintaining the point-to-point -point use case. Using distributed queues, you can balance the load of processing JMS messages across a cluster for more scalability, and you can increase your throughput by adding additional managed servers to the cluster. There are two models for the PubSub use case with distributed topics. The first is called a uniform distributed topic. In this model, messages are delivered to each consumer within each MDB container. This means that when you use uniform distributed topics, you'll get a copy of each message on each server, so your application should be designed to handle this. Depending on the behavior you're looking for from your application, WebLogic also offers partition distributed topics. In this model, all of the consumers within a single container or one single managed server receive a copy of a message. This allows for load balancing of messages across nodes in a cluster and does not have message forwarding or duplication between two nodes. WebLogic offers both the uniform distributed topic pattern and the partition distributed topic pattern, and you should choose the pattern which best suits your application. Next, let's take a look at the details of the WebLogic JMS configuration. Of course, you'll start with one or more machines where you want to install and use WebLogic. Once you install WebLogic, you will need to create a domain in order to deploy and use your applications. Each domain has a single administration server that is used to manage the domain configuration, and you will typically create one or more clusters within your domain. Each cluster has one or more managed servers. The first configuration construct that I would like to cover is the JMS Connection Factory. This is the configuration construct that manages the connection that message producers make to the JMS destinations. You can configure things like load balancing, server affinity, and transactionality within the connection factories. Next, you will configure a JMS server for each managed server in your cluster where you are using JMS. The JMS server is where you enable things like persistent storage. For persistence, you have the option of using a file-based store or a database. If you're using a database, it's important to make sure that it meets the requirements you have for HA. Finally, destinations are created and targeted to JMS servers. In the case of a distributed destination, one physical destination is created in each JMS server where the distributed destination is targeted, and they are accessed through one single global JNDI name. Now let's take a look at how WebLogic handles the distributed JMS destinations in the context of its configuration constructs. When you create a distributed destination, you will specify a global JNDI name. Behind the scenes, WebLogic will create physical member destinations and target them to the JMS servers in your cluster. The JNDI names of the physical members will be a combination of the JMS server name and the global JNDI name specified for the distributed destination. When you are using standard Java EE, you can access the destination using the global JNDI name. 
When you send a message to the destination using the global JNDI name, it will be delivered to one of the member destinations. Depending on the, your settings for load balancing and server affinity on your connection factory, the message may be processed on the node where it is received, or it may be sent to another node in the cluster for processing. However, in the case of a uniform distributed topic, messages delivered to a single node in the cluster will be forwarded to all other nodes in the cluster. Next, I'd like to give you an overview of the distributed JMS configuration that we'll be using for this example. I've started out by creating a cluster that has two managed servers. I'll be creating two JMS servers, one for each of the managed servers in my cluster. I'm going to enable persistence and I'm going to create a new persistent store for my JMS server. I'll be using file-based stores for the persistence. I'm going to target it to manage server 1 because that's where I'm creating my uh, JMS server. It's important to make sure that you have your JMS server and JMS store targeted to the same place. Now, I'll go through the same process for my second JMS server. So now I've created my two JMS servers. Next, we'll create the JMS module that contains the configuration for the connection factory and distributed destinations we'll use for this example. I'll choose the default target to be the cluster. This enables me to create destinations and have them use the default targeting for the module without having to explicitly specify targeting for those destinations. Next, I'll create the connection factory that we'll use for this example. Next, I'll create my distributed queue. and I'll keep the default targeting to be the cluster. Next, I'm going to create a uniform distributed topic. The forwarding policy can either be all, none, partitioned, or replicated. The default setting is replicated, and we'll leave that because that enables the uniform distributed topic. Next, for the partition distributed topic, we will choose the forwarding policy of partitioned. Again, keeping the default targeting. Finally, I have one more topic that I'll create. And this is actually a utility that I use to clear the screen uh, before showing the next example. So here we go. Now I've created my JMS resources. So it's fairly straightforward and easy to create the JMS resources uh, for distribu using distributed JMS across a cluster. Next, I'd like to show you the JNDI tree for one of my managed servers. Here, if we expand the JNDI tree, we can see the distributed destinations that were created. So here I have my uniform distributed topic queue and partition distributed topic that I created. So if I click on one of these, we'll see that this is a distributed destination. You also see here in the JNDI tree 
my physical members will be under the prefix including my JMS server and then the same JNDI name that I supplied for the global object itself. So here we see the binding name, uh, the JNDI name here is the base name, this is the global JNDI name and if I click on the member topic we'll see that the name has the prefix of the JMS server and we'll also see that this is an actual destination versus a distributed destination. Next, I'd like to walk you through the MDBs and how you can configure those to listen to WebLogic JMS destinations. The first case that we'll look at is a distributed queue. And for this example, I have two beans that are listening, or two consumers that are listening to the destination. One is being A and the second is being B. So looking at the annotation for the to define the MDB, I am specifying the name, the name of the destination it listens to the connection factory and then specifying the type as a queue. And all this bean does is it checks for a text message and then prints out a message on the screen with the message that's included in the JMS message. So let's run a quick example here. So I'll start this off and what, what my producer is doing is just sending four messages to the cluster. Here we can see messages one and three are consumed on node number one and messages two and four are consumed on node number two. It's just coincidence that on node one, bean B is receiving the message, and on node two, bean A is receiving the message. So if I run this test again, I get the same behavior where B is consuming the message on node one, and A is consuming the message on node two. Next, let's take a look at the consumers on the uniform distributed topic. Again, in this case, I have being A and B that do the same functionality, which is just take the message off of the topic and display a message on the screen. One thing that you'll notice that's different here is the topic message distribution mode being set to one copy per server. What this means is that each and every server will receive a copy of the message or this MDB deployed to each and every server will receive a copy of the message. So let's see how this works in practice. So here we see that both node 1 and 2 are receiving both message 1 and 2 and both beans A and B are processing the message. So if I were to run it again, again we would see two messages being delivered to each node. And this is the uniform distributed topic case, so all consumers on all nodes will process the message or receive a copy of the message. Let's take a look at the partition distributed topic case. Here I am specifying one copy per application for the topic messages distribution mode. This setting specifies that one message will be received by all of the MDBs within any given application, but only on one node of the cluster. WebLogic will ensure that a message is only delivered once to the application, i.e. to one node, even though there may be multiple nodes in the cluster. I am also specifying local only for the distributed destination connection. This means that MDBs will only consume messages from their local member destination for the distributed topic. Let's take a look at the behavior for this setting. So here I'll run my uh, partition distributed topic producer, which is just putting messages on the partition distributed topic. And we'll see here that server one gets messages two and four, and both A and B process the message, or each message that's received. So we have two and four going to server one, and one and three going to server two. So if we run it again, we'll, also, we'll see again that the messages are getting load balanced across the cluster. Thanks for your time for the presentation today. You can find more information about WebLogic online on the Oracle Technology Network, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook.